Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to be revealing the trick that's got more laughs, more screams, and more gasps than any other trick that I know. And yes, that was a magician falling messy with this trick. So many magicians say that if they could perform just one trick for the rest of their life, then this would be it. So you guys are in for a real treat today. And this is one of my go-to card tricks because it just allows you to get inside someone's head and control what they think. So let me begin by giving you a performance of this and then I'll teach you how it's done. So the magician's got a deck of cards and he says that one card inside this deck has been flipped over and is face down. All the other cards are face up. He says he's going to try and control the spectator's mind and make them think of the only card in this deck that is face down. So he tells the spectator to breathe in and then out and then just think of any card that comes to them. So the spectator at this point has a genuinely free choice to think of any card that they like. Because I don't have a spectator here, I'm just gonna randomly generate a card for you now. So we'll generate a new card. In this case, it's the King of Diamonds, but let's just say the spectator wanted to change their mind. So we'll generate one more card and in this case, it's now the four of diamonds. So that's the spectator, that's the card that the spectator is thinking of. At this point, the spectator then says out loud that they're thinking of the four of diamonds. And the magician points to the deck of cards that's been on the table the entire time and opens them up. He says that the spectator could have thought of any card that they liked, but there's one card in this deck, as he promised, that's face down. If we go through the cards, we can see that there's one card in the deck that's face down, and it's not any card, it's the spectators, four of diamonds. Now that's just one of many incredible ways to present this illusion, so make sure you stay until the end because I'm gonna reveal two more really powerful ways to present this same effect. Now, I absolutely love this effect, and in the magic world, this is known as the invisible deck. And I like to think of this as my secret weapon, because you can carry around just a deck of cards with you, and at a moment's notice, produce one of the strongest effects that you can possibly do in magic. But here's the reason I really like this effect. There are a lot of card tricks out there that are all about the magician showing off their skills and their slights and their fancy moves, and the audience sits there as just a spectator. They're not really involved. But with this trick, things get really interactive because the person watching actually gets to hold the cards and then go through the whole process of picking whatever card that they want. And just when they're totally convinced that there's no possible way you could know what they chose, you go through the cards and show them that their one is the only one that's face down. Now, just make sure you stay until the end because I'm gonna be giving you two really powerful ways to present this illusion, which is the most important part of this effect. But before we get there, let's learn how it's done. So this is a trick that I truly don't leave the house without. At its most basic level, the spectator can name any card they want, really any card, it's, there's no force or anything like that. And whatever card they name will be the card that's face down in this deck. So completely random, let's just say they named the Jack of Spades. I could open up the box and as you can see, very cleanly, every single card in the deck is face up. But if I keep going through, you notice that there's one face down card right in the middle of the deck. And lo and behold, it's the Jack of Spades. So this is a gimmicks deck of cards. It's really cheap and you can buy it from any magic shop. I've left a link down in the description to where you can get one. And basically there are three things you need to know about this. So I explain all three very quickly now. And then when you see how all three things work, you'll realize just how easy this effect is to do. So the first thing you need to know is that every single card on this side of the deck is even. So take a good look, there's a four, there's a two, there's a 10. Uh, queen counts as 12, so that's even. So every single card on this side of the deck is even. And then every single card on this side of the deck is odd. Okay, so if I go through the cards, obviously ace is one, and then jacks count as 11, so that's odd. And all the cards on this side of the deck are odd. So even cards, odd cards, and the black kings, they're even, and the red kings, they're odd. The next thing you need to know is that all the cards are in pairs and each pair adds up to 13. 
So for example, um, 6 plus what equals 13? Well, 6 plus 7 equals 13, which means the pair, the card on the back of it, is going to be a 7. I'll give you one more example. Um, let's find a, a queen. So a queen is 12. So 12 plus what equals 13? Well, 12 plus 1 equals 13, so we know that there's going to be an ace on the back of here. And there's an ace there. So that's the second thing you've got to remember. All the ca cards add up to 13. The final thing you've got to remember is that spades and hearts are paired and clubs and diamonds are paired. So spades and hearts, that's easy to remember because they look quite similar. So if I go through the cards, uh, let's find a spade. You can see there's a spade here. So we know on the back of it is a heart. And if I find a club, you can see that there's a club here. So we know on the back of it, there's going to be a diamond. Now with this information, you can basically know the position of any face down card in the deck. So let me give you an example of how this works. Let's just say someone thinks of the nine of hearts. You think, okay, nine plus what equals 13? Nine plus four equals 13. And what's the opposite of hearts? The opposite is spades. So you now know that the card that you need to find is the four of spades. So you'd then go through the cards and you'd find the four of spades, which is here. And you know that the card behind it is gonna be the nine of hearts. Boosh, it's that easy. Now you're probably wondering why when I spread through the cards, all these cards seem face up and you can't see all the red cards that are face down, all the pairs. And the reason for that is each card has a very rough backing on it, which means these cards essentially stick to each other unless they're really pushed. So I can go through all the cards and then let's just say I wanted the card that's behind the two of hearts, which will be the jack of spades. I can just push down on the jack, push down on the two, sorry, and reveal the card behind it and it will be the jack of spades. So the real secret to this is just doing it as fast as possible. The final thing you've got to remember is what you, when you put the cards back into the box, which side is even and which side is odd. So I always have the odd side face up like this. So let me give you an example. Let's just say the spectator says they're thinking of the five of diamonds. You know that five plus eight equals 13 and the opposite of diamonds is clubs. So you're looking for the eight of clubs. So eight is even. So we know that this side up is odd. So we turn the deck over to the even side and then we pull out all the cards and we're looking for the eight of clubs. So we just go through the deck until we find the eight of clubs, which is here and the card behind it, we know is going to be the spectator selection. You can show the rest of the cards are face down, and then the one card that's face up is their five of diamonds. So this is a super simple effect that hits hard and packs small, but make sure you check the next section of the video because I'm gonna be explaining the best ways to present this magic trick. So ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the most important part of the video as I'm gonna be giving you two different ways to present this trick and turn it from an average effect that you show your mates to something that people will actually remember for weeks, months, and even years to come. Now, number two is my favorite way to present this effect, but let's go through them both now. So presentation number one is the most popular way to do this. And essentially you pretend that you've got an invisible deck of cards, you hand it to your spectator, tell them to take the cards out, shuffle up all the invisible cards. And once they've done that, they can go through, choose one card, flip it over and put it back in the deck. Then what you do is you snap your fingers and tell them that everything they just imagined has turned real. You then take the actual invisible deck, the gimmicked one here, and you go through the cards and reveal that the one card that's turned over in the real deck is the same card that they imagined turning over in the invisible deck. So presentation idea number two is my absolute favorite way to do this effect and it works especially well if you're at a bar or a pub. So what you need is a snooker table and you just get a deck of normal cards and you push all the cards all over the snooker table. Then what you ask your spectator to do is hit a ball and whatever card the ball lands on or is closest to is their selection. They turn over the card and you confirm that it was totally random. You then take the invisible deck and go through the cards and say that you knew they were gonna choose the four of clubs because it's the only face down card in this deck. This presentation idea is really fun because it's super memorable and a really unique way for the spectator to choose a card. Anyway, that's it for this video and please let me know in the comments what your favorite way to present this trick is.